Welcome to Coding Flappy Bird in Scratch demonstration number two. In this demonstration we're going to look into making these trees and having them pan from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen to give the effect of the bird flying forward. Uh, at this point right now you should have already coded uh, everything that we did in tutorial number one which is having the bird and the backdrop uh, and uh, the motion of the bird coded as well where the space bar lifts it up. For this particular demonstration, what I want to do is just uh, disengage the uh, movement of the bird just because we're going to be clicking the, uh, the green flag quite a bit and it's much easier if the bird just stays up here flying and we can mess with all the trees down here below. So we're now going to go into and find our trees. Leave a use this tree number one. It's a little big, so we'll bring that down to about 30% instead of 100. So we'll bring it down and we'll put it right here on the ground. And again, we're going to have it pan from over here to over here. So we will start as far over as we can get it. Oh, it's a little too much there. And we are looking at 233 and 137. If I change my 233 to 240, Actually brings it a little bit further over. Let's see if we can cheat any more. 250. All right, now it's pretty much a 248. That's what my limit is going to be. And my Y is going to be negative 137. So this is where I'm going to want it to start every single time, right? When I check the flag, our tree is going to start over here. Then we'll start flying forward. So under my events, we're going to say when the flag is checked, we want our tree to go to this position. Awesome. Now, after uh, after we click the flag and it goes to this position, I want to forever move to the left-hand side of the screen. So we will say enter control, forever, and we'll change our X coordinate. Right? Our Y can stay the same because the tree isn't going to be moving up and down. Uh, we're going to change our X position by a factor of, it's the default is 10, but we can say uh, 5. Now, positive five isn't gonna work, that's gonna bring it over to the right, and we want it to go from right to left, so we'll say negative five. We'll see how that looks. Perfect. All right, you can almost see it right now, where it looks like the bird is flying forward because the tree is passing underneath it. Again, in actuality, the tree is moving, the bird is not. So, we have exactly what we want here, with the exception of the fact that when it gets to this side of the screen, it stops, and we want it to now go back to the beginning and, uh, and start moving again. So we're gonna say change x by five until this thing gets all the way over here at its furthest y position, which we can see is negative 246, and we are going to have it go back to that beginning uh, position that it was over here. So we can use our, uh, our control here, we can say if, <coughs> we can say if our x position is less than negative 245, because we're at 246 right now. So we'll say if we're less than 245, then um, we want to go back to the beginning. So we'll say if our x position, if we go in here to motion, we can actually grab our x position and say if our x position is less than negative 245, then go back to this position right here. We'll just duplicate that block and put it right in here. All right, start here, forever change x by five. When we reach that left-hand side of the screen, that x position, go back to the beginning. Perfect. All right, now we're flying on and on and on. This is good. I believe that two trees are better. Uh, if we looked at our demo game before, uh, when we started it, we have two trees that are flying underneath us and it looks a little bit more realistic when we have that. You can add more if you want to stick with one, that's probably okay as well. So uh, to avoid having to duplicate everything on here, we can just right click, duplicate, and uh, it does most of what we want, but we want this tree to be a little bit different. So I, I believe we're gonna, I'm gonna change the size of it down to, I don't know, 23. So it's a little bit smaller. And we're gonna bring this thing down to right here. So our X position is going to be changing. So it's 87 right now, but we want it over on the other side. And our Y position is negative 141. All right, that's a little bit different than what we had before. We're at 130, negative 137, so we want to change that to be negative 141. 
and then this one right here, same thing, negative 1, 41. Okay, so we're going to start over here, and we're going to move with this other tree. Now these two trees are going to be exactly on top of each other if we started them, which we don't want, right? We want them to be separated. So I'm going to take this second tree we had right here, and we'll put in a wait command. I'll have it just wait maybe one second. Cool. Now it's over here, and it's not going back to the beginning. <clears throat> we see the x position it's at right now is negative 241, so that means we have to change this. It's never going to reach that negative 245, so we have to change that to be um, responsive to this number right here. So in, if that number is negative 241, we'll say this is going to have to be negative 240, and hopefully that brings it back to the beginning. All right, we're looking good. Now the one last thing, if you noticed it from before, when this starts, you see the tree, you can see the end of it uh, poking out right here, and it's not moving. All right, is it a big deal? I don't know. It'd be one of those things where if you were coding it, you may say it's no big deal, but if you were playing the game, you'd say that's, that's an error. It's a very easy error to, um, to get rid of, and if we just go into looks, we can use our hide and show commands. So we can actually just have this thing, uh, when it's checked, uh, it could be either above or below this. But we'll say hide for that one second, and then as soon as that's done, we'll show, and then it'll start moving. Okay. Now that gets rid of that other one that's there, and it looks like our bird is flying forward. The trees, I did not have be a factor uh, in the game. That means if the bird hits them, it's okay. Um, I think it just gives a lot of lifelike movement where now it looks as if you have a bird that's flying forward because there are trees passing underneath it.